Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. That's not an assault rifle, it's a snow foam gun. So don't be calling the police on me. Today, we are going to be talking about interior detailers and attempting to review this product here, which is DIY Detail Interior Ceramic Pro GRD. I don't know what that means. Interior Protection Auto Detailing Supplies ready to use 16 fluid ounces or nearly half a litre made in the USME. Okay, so it's some sort of interior ceramic dressing. Before we go on to that, over here we have a list of how many others? Three, six, nine, ten. So we've got 11 dressings in total with the DIY one over there. Uh, we're going to be doing the best of dressing thing and I need to use a lot of these products before. Just use them, just use them. Just for a few months, just play around with them. Um, I know all of these, I know that one. Don't know that one. Don't know that one. Don't know that one. The rest of them I've used before at various times. So really probably need to just focus on those three and this one, try, try and learn a bit about them. Now, why DIY detail? Because they're not very big in the UK, are they? They're not very big. Um, it's because it's an interesting product. That's why it's in the lineup. If this was just some interior dressing, you know, sort of white silicone thing, I don't think I'd have put it in the test. It's because it's a ceramic. That gets my interest up. A bit like when you go into Halfords and you see ceramic products, you know, that are labelled ceramics, you want to try more than the non-ceramic version because you think it's superior. But then some of you, very cynically, say that it's all hype. Um, especially with ceramics, so the industry can take the word ceramic and use it when it isn't really appropriate. What do you mean by that, John? Okay, this is the interesting bit. So ceramic coatings are typically, um, you know, <laughs> a hard resin material which changes state. They come in small little glass bottles so the air doesn't get into them, they're properly sealed all that sort of stuff and you know it's not going to the glass isn't going to deteriorate there, there is a element of those coatings that contains a small amount of silane resin typically or historically which was a silicon and nitrogen based material that when the ether that's within it the carrier dissolves away it exposes the silane resin to um, the moisture the hydrogen and the oxygen in the air and then a state change occurs, so that thin layer of liquid material, when it, the air hits it, changes into a um, silicon and nitrogen based rock hard coating, sort of almost crystalline glass like resin. Uh, not ceramic, but you know, the, the term ceramic has been coined with that. Now, what happened, if we fast forward today, there's other core resins that aren't silane based, which are similar that are used in ceramic coatings. And of course, with your core resins, whether it's silane or something else, you mix in other resins, organic or inorganic, usually organic. Um, you mix in other resins with that, so you get a cocktail of resins um, to give you other characteristics. And you, So you have not all ceramic coatings are the same because of the other resins that they add. What are resins, John? Well, you could have a, add a silicon resin, you could add, um, what else? You could add SiO2 to a ceramic coating. You could add micronized graphene powder. You can add fluorine um, to make it more hydrophobic. You can add silicon, siloxane, all these things. Um, I'm forgetting probably some of the main ones as well. So you make blends which are different. So you get not all coatings, you know, they're not all exactly the same, but they might be using some of the core resins. Okay, the key ingredient is that silane because that is the thing that goes rock hard typically. So that's often referred to as the solids. Now a ceramic coating could have a high amount of solids, silane in it. Maybe maybe 20%, 25%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, not, not 100% still what the upper limits are. The, hard, the higher that solids content, if you tipped them out, the more a crystalline rock hard mess you'd get all over your desk that you could chisel off. Um, and the more crustiness you get all around the bottle, and if you tipped your ceramic coating into a bit of fabric, it would go rock hard and all crystalline, you know, with the more solids. The less solids it would have, the less of that horrible 
white crystalline stuff you would get. Or indeed, if it was a different resin that wasn't that silane, it can be less crystalline. So we're giving you some good background information here, and although some of you will have disappeared already, because you just want me to tell you if it's good or bad. I don't do videos for people like that. You can go elsewhere, that's all over the internet. We talk about the interesting stuff. So that's what a ceramic initially is. Why is that relevant? Because those ceramics have been around for what, 25 years, something like that? Something like that, I don't know. How long have they been in the automotive thing? But I'd say around about sort of, 2010, something like that, you started seeing ceramic products which were not ceramics. So they might have been like SiO2 water-based toppers, like for, for an example, Car Pro Reload had a, was one of the first on the market, SiO2 product. And the, the phrase ceramic sprays kind of came in as well. But a lot of these ceramic sprays were actually water-based and they weren't using those speciality resins that need to be held in speciality chemicals, non-water-based. Okay, um, small glass bottles is the easiest way to differentiate. What you started getting was water-based products. So every brand would be bringing out a ceramic detailer because it had the word in it, ceramic in it. You thought it might be like a ceramic coating. Well, it's not, it's nothing like a ceramic coating. It was usually just, you know, it doesn't, there's no formal definition of what a ceramic has to be. So you call anything a ceramic coating. I could sell you a um, custard pie, you know, and slime it all up in a blender and put some milk in it and put it in a bottle and call it a ceramic spray. Uh, <laughs> custard pie, where'd that come from? Anyway, you get the idea. And of course, every brand now has a ceramic spray. And if you call it a ceramic spray and it's a detail spray, you can charge double the amount for it. So the ceramic band, bandwagon is a bandwagon that every single detailing brand is on that bandwagon, has done that bandwagon. Okay, so the ceramic bandwagon has burst. So why is this all relevant, John? Because the first thing I want to know about this detailing DIY thing, is this some silicon slimy water-based thing that's just called um, an interior ceramic? Or is it genuine ceramic-esque material? It might not be silane, um, but it is, is it genuine ceramic material? And I'm pleased to say, I think it's genuine ceramic material. What makes you say that, John? Well, this is just a few very easy signs. See if you think it's water-based. It's full of bits, okay? I don't know. Can you see those bits in there? That is a sign, that's the sort of thing you get with ceramic coating. You get a hardening of the bits around the edge and they've got nothing really to bond to so they tend to drop to the bottom. You can get them around the top of the bottle as well. There's little signs that there's some ceramic material in this, obviously not tons, because you don't want it to be a full blown ceramic material uh, coating. It also, if I take the lid off, oh you swine, uh, I'm looking to see, it won't be water based if it's gen generally a ceramic coating. Now you probably can't tell from here, but the schnozzle, be careful when you're sniffing these. I was in Fresh Lads the other day and they passed me a product that was in a similar bottle that was something similar, a ceramic S, and I took a big sniff and I nearly passed out. I put it up there and literally just nearly like, <laughs> dug on the floor and it nearly killed me. Some of them can have some nasty stuff in them. So if you're gonna smell them, just go white right back. <laughs> Don't take a big honk. Don't take a big honk. That smells like petroleum dissolate to me. Very mild, non-aromatic, non, uh, so it's quite good. It's not an offensive smell. It smells of barely anything, but I don't think it's water-based, that's good. Um, so yeah, this will probably be a blend. It won't just be a tiny amount of silane and um, you know, a, a solvent. It will be a lot of solvent, uh, some silane, and probably some other um, materials, siloxane, whatever. Okay, um, so that's a genuine, that's the real deal. That leads me on to the next thing, okay? Why is that important? This product costs, I believe, £46.99 or £47 in the uh, UK. Um, that's a lot of money, okay? So that's, we need to talk about that. £47 for an interior spray. How many people are gonna pay 47 pound for an interior spray? Not that many, okay? 
There has to be a benefit before you'll cough out that. So you'll either have to hear a YouTuber going raving about it, telling you how amazing it is, and then you might buy it, or there has to be some benefit to you that you think this is worth that sort of money. Because your typical cost, and we, when we do our comparison, we'll work out average cost per use and how much it costs and all that. So that Because we, we're always looking for value, basically. Uh, I know there's lots of counter-arguments. You know, well, this, this lasts longer, John, it's worth every penny. If it's this, that, or the other, whatever. Um, but we don't do that. We just look at the price per application. And then you can get a good idea of, you know, if you're interested in how much it's costing you per use, um, how much where you are with it. So, yeah, £47. Would I pay £47 for an interior dressing? No. Um, I have bought this, though. Uh, I've bought it because for all of the interesting reasons. It's interesting. It's not just the same one. Another quote. DIY detail do sell you a normal interior dressing that's probably very similar to all of these. It costs a reasonable amount of money. So, yes, if you are a cynic, but you like this brand, they have a normal interior detail spray that you can use that's probably some silicon and water, and it's a lot cheaper. So, yeah, I'm glad they've brought this out because it's a bit different, but, you know, I normally wouldn't pay that sort of price. Now, some other little things I noticed. I think you get this um, sprayer with the product. I'm 99% sure. Apologies if I got this wrong. I checked the website. It looks like this is the sprayer that comes with it. I just put it in the cupboard. It's not that one. That goes with the Angel Wax one. Um, the straw isn't cut to size, so it's like you have to cut, you have to trim that down. Um, I don't like that. I always pick that up in reviews. The, you can counter argue and say, well, if we give you the full size straw, John, you could choose to use that in a litre bottle. No, I want to use it with this. I get millions of straws. I don't want to be trimming them. I want them to be trimmed for me. And trust me, you wouldn't go into Halfords and find the Maguire's, you know, or the Turtle Wax or the Auto Glim just giving you a longer straw for the bottle. They wouldn't do that. So, you know, I'd like it, the brands to cut these to size. That's just me. Um, decent quality uh, trigger thing with a little filter in it so don't be afraid of all that little muck at the bottom that will get it that will stop it getting up into the chamber and you can't really avoid it I don't think okay price bits history of ceramic now um, here's something we'll go on to next before we talk about some other stuff PPE so it's important with genuine ceramic material for the PPE information to be correct uh, caution, eye irritant, avoid with eyes. Yeah, definitely, if it's solvent. But also the silane or whatever material that is, whatever core resin, is not going to be something you want to get in your eyes. Yeah, definitely. Do not put this in your eyes. No mention, though, of getting it on your hands. Uh, I wouldn't want to get any ceramic material on my hands. I have done. You know, my fingers and hands are still there. They've not done a Clarence Bodica and melted off. Um... There is further information, SDS there, and if you read that SDS information on all of the stuff with this product, you'll panic and you'll never want to go near it because it will say it's carcinogenic, it's this, it's that and that. They have to say that because naphtha is carcinogenic, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you'll panic if you read those, but it does say wear gloves on the SDS sheet, and I think... You should wear gloves when you're doing this, and I think that should be on the instruction label, in my opinion. Keep out of reach of children. Yeah, brilliant. You need to have all this stuff. It's so important, and you need to have that red triangle with the thing in it for it to be legal to sell in the UK. Um, and these are all good because you can. Everything's going online nowadays, isn't it? So I like all that. Uh, and that's who is distributing it. So there we go. Um, now let's just have a look at the instructions, which is really important. This is the next really important thing of this review before we finally get on to actually show you what it's like and use it and all that sort of stuff. Um, right, this is really important. Description, interior ceramic coating utilizes technology to seal the surface, yeah, okay, and increase surface tension. So in other words, make a hydrophobic finish, yeah. Uh, but also creating a surface um, with increased stain resistance and less wear and tear. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Has that been independently tested anywhere? Because it's important. 
increased wear and tear resistance. So that's basically saying if you use this, your car is gonna be, it's gonna fare better. You know, it's gonna get less wear and tear on it. How do you prove that? Because you're putting such a thin layer of material over there. Does it really make any difference? You know, I don't, I'm not so sure it does really, to be honest. I'm just giving you my thoughts. Um, no mention of UV, um, UV, uh, you know, is, does it contain UV protection? Because UV sun ray damage can be the most important factor, especially if you live in like Spain or a hot climate. You know, you, those dashboards crack and they go grey when they're black, you know, and they get decimated by the sun and they all patch up and, you know, so UV protection can always be a good thing. Some coatings go on about UV protection a lot. Um, this doesn't mention it. Directions for use. Test on a small inconspicuous surface. I'm so glad they've got that in there because it's so important. Spray interior ceramic directly onto the surface, allowing the product to dry and wipe away any residual product. Okay, so spray on, wipe off. Avoid spraying the headliner or oversaturating surfaces. So, okay, they're giving you one surface that you shouldn't spray this on. It's just headliner. Why headliner? Okay, why? It's the only thing I can't use it on. We'll come back to that in a second. The product is safe on leather, vinyl, and fabrics. So why is it not safe on headliner? Don't know. Um, I've got a lot of questions over about what I can use this on. Can I spray this ceramic on those old, like really old, like 20 year old sat nav screens that used to get in BMWs, like the old M3s that have that film over them. They're not like a glass screen. They've got like this screen and it's got like something on the surface. And if you use strong solvents, you can strip that off. Can I use that on those? Because they're quite common still. Um, and I'm not sure if you can. Can I use that on Alcantara? Can I spray that all over an Alcantara steering wheel? Because um, it says it's safe on fabric. Alcantara is a form of microfiber, kind of. Um, or is that silane material in there gonna set hard and it's not good for the Alcantara? It's not gonna maintain softness. You know, imagine saturating it. If you went full idiot mode and soaked out Al Alcantara with a quarter of the bottle because you're an idiot, you know, is that gonna damage the Alcantara? That's things that come to my mind. Can I, it says it's safe on leather, but can I use it with aniline leather? So 99% of leather in cars is really, ooh, what's going on with that? My battery gone flat. 99% um, of leather on cars is really just a painted finish. So under there is some leather, but the surface, hello you, hello pretty, hello wiggle bumps. Give me a sit, sit, sit down, sit. No, that's not, sit, sit, I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. Where's mummy? Right. So this is actually a painted surface with top coat, although it's probably worn all that off now. There's mummy, she's back. This bit here might be vinyl and this bit might be leather on some cars. I think that's actually all leather. You get the idea, but aniline leather is like a raw finish that doesn't have this heavy process top coat and paint sometimes. It can be painted or dyed. So you're soaking, your ceramic can soak into it. Am I really gonna spray silane material into fabric? Uh, carpet, upholstery, you know, fabric. It's bizarre, so I've got a lot of questions. Um, glass, you know, that's an interior surface. Can I spray it onto the interior glass? Or is it gonna need proper prep? Is there any benefit of spraying it onto the interior glass? Why would you do that? But I just wanna know, you know, because <laughs> it might be, it, some, there are, it's, you know, it's an interior spray and sometimes you just spray things around and wipe. Um, pedals, gotta put it on my rubbery brake pedals. Get ceramic protection on that. So we've got a lot of questions around the interior. Um, you know, would I put it on a gear knob? Probably okay, because it's leather. But I think there's some surfaces beyond just the headlining. If you can't put it on headlining, for example, could I spray it all over this? That's not headlining. I tell you what, it's exactly the same as headlining. Yes, I'm filming, go away. <laughs> Love you. Um, you know, can I spray it in the boot lining? 
So I don't think enough thought has gone into where you can use it and where you can't use it. If you get the German products, they're really good with all that. Um, and you could do a lot of damage potentially with a real ceramic material if you put it on something. Because you ain't getting it out of a fabric if it goes in there. Let's put it that way. So yeah, some questions around this. I can simplify it in my head because I understand, I think, if it is what it is, what I think it is, I would probably put this on, you know, probably on non-porous surfaces, you know, you know, dashboards, yes. I'm not sure I'd put it on the polycarb instrument panel. I'm, I'd be careful about putting it on any glass or any screens. I'm not sure I'd put it on leather, to be honest, because it's, it might be there longer than I want it. And I don't know the benefits of that. Um, I'm not sure I'd put it on fabric. So I'd, I'd probably use it as a dressing for all of the hard plastic areas. Okay. That's how I would probably use it. Now, I think we've covered everything on my little yellow, my little board. Yes, we have. So let's get on and use this now, guys. So I've been in there this morning and just gone over it with some all-purpose cleaner and brushes, scrubbing things and wiping things. So we should have a good prepped surface. So let's move on, let's move on. I think I'll just get this, actually no, let's do it all in one take. Let's do it all in one take, John. Why not, let's live life, let's go frivolous. Let's give this a little shake, it doesn't say to, but we'll give it a little shake. A bit of, no, there's no frothiness. It doesn't look like there's any surfactant in there at all, which is good, see that? No surfactant, what's the time? Anyway, get a move on. Oh, I've got to trim this, haven't I? So this is why I like it all to be done. Right. There you go. Yeah, we've got the gloves on here. Also, here's something that's interesting. Let's just close the door. Also, not the biggest fan, when you use ceramic coatings, you're not spraying them in the air. Talked about this in certain other videos. I'm not the biggest fan of atomizing real ceramic material and spraying it around. Why? Because it goes in your bloody lungs, doesn't it? When you atomize this, I'm the least health and safety guy. You know what I'm like. Oh no. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the worst, but I do not like spraying ceramic material around in the air where it atomizes. So sometimes you can spray this, where, where are we? You can spray this into a applicator. Does it say that on the instructions? I bet it doesn't. Spray directly onto the surface, yeah. Not keep too keen on this, but I'm gonna follow the instructions. Don't like doing this. We're just gonna see what it looks like. Okay, spraying it away from me. Let's spray some on. That wets it all out nicely. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, and I can smell this now. So the moment I can smell it, I'm honking in this material. It doesn't say anything about using a ventilated area either, does it? Maybe that's on the SDS. Okay, most of this is solvent. So does it say let this dry? I think it does, doesn't it? Allow the product to dry, interesting, then wipe it and wipe away any residuals. Well, once it's dried, you ain't gonna be able to wipe away any residuals. Yep. Interesting. Interesting, I mean, that might have been quite a lot of product. Just gotta open the door as well, guys. Jesus, my floor's gone all shiny. <laughs> it's ceramic coat my floor. Yeah, so you could get around what I've just said about if you're worried about spraying the material by spraying it into an applicator and then applying it, if you're worried about it. And it's the same with products like um, TAC Moonlight and uh, Gion Can Coat that come with sprayers. And they, they, they do say that to you, spray them into the applicator if you're worried about that. Or you could mask up, but a normal little face filter thing, you know, like a COVID mask, dusk mask, ain't gonna do nothing. Well, it might do a little bit, but. Okay, it's just starting to dry off now. You can just see signs that's drying. So I'm just gonna wipe it to the finish, to the desired finish. Remove any residuals. That's felt like long enough, you know, the coating. 
don't have to wait too long. Yeah, so that's all wiped off. This is pretty damn easy to apply, isn't it? So what I would say is, I can't really tell much difference in the finish. So if we put some into this cloth, let's put a line of it down here. Yeah, so we've got a little bit of the material that you can probably just see. So you can, you could easily apply it this way. It's interesting, isn't it? It's what you'd think a very small amount of ceramic material would be like. That's drying off a little bit. If we wipe over that, dry bit, you cannot really tell or well, you can just about tell where it's been. You can just about tell, can't you? But it doesn't alter the finish at all, really. You wouldn't, you wouldn't really know, would you? you, you would, or you wouldn't care, let me put it that way. That's kind of good. So you could use this. Let's just do a little bit more and do this whole top, top bit. So, you know, if you're really fussy about the finish of your, your car, a much better way to apply it, I think. Then. Just get it on the cloth and just put a thin layer of it. Just put a thin layer of it over the entire door card. You'll mess around, put it over the door and the door. It's another thing when you're doing interior. Despite what you see in detailing videos, you just want it done quickly, don't you? Especially <laughs> this bit. So I'll leave that bottom bit as is. Yeah, I wouldn't have any problem with that. Let's go inside the car then. Ooh. A little bit more nervous about this product. Well, not, I'm not nervous at all, but I just don't want to be spraying it around. So if I'm spraying all this around here and I'm getting the ceramic coating on the glass, you know, it's proper ceramic material. Once that dries, I'm worried that that'll be a pain to get off. So I'm more, I'm, I'm going off piste. by just putting the material in there. And maybe, maybe that does affect it, but it just feels better to me than, yeah, I can see. Can you see where it's going? So it's just putting, it does feel like a ceramic actually. Oh, funny that, John. That's a much better way to apply it though. I just worried sometimes when you put like dressings over dashboards and you miss little bits and you miss corner bits, sometimes you can really see it. Whereas if you miss anything with this, so it's not the end of the world, just put a bit more on, but yeah, it's good. No problem with that. It's just putting a slight sheen on there. It's not greasy. It doesn't feel like it's too hardcore. I'm gonna put it on the steering wheel, it's leather. Why not? Let's just do it. Put it everywhere. It's giving it a nice richness, actually. You'd probably just take your time doing this a little bit and put it everywhere. Here's one thing that's really interesting, because it talked on the bottle about, you know, you put this on a car and it reduces wear and tear. I like, just wanted to get this in, it makes me feel good about BMWs. This car's done 150 odd thousand miles. You know, it's an old 26 year old BMW. Look at all the dials, look. You talk about build quality. Look at the dials in there. Look at that. that, that well, yeah, that's off another car. Look at this though. Where's all the buttons all worn out? I think whether this lasts or gets worn out is more to do with the build quality of the car. And like back in the day of the E36, this was all built properly. You go in the E46 and all the rubber around here, all that painted surface just melts off the car. And like you put your thumb in it and pull it off. So it's like things haven't got better. They just, <laughs> the car industry is just working out how to do things cheaper, which isn't always good. So yeah. I'm really worried when I'm putting this down that it needs to be a little consistent sheen rather than a little 
don't just get a bit or footprint of it on one bit because then you'll get a little patch. But I'm just using what's on the towel. That's looking good. Yeah, it's probably dried off already. Uh, I think this can be used, you know, I'm going into all that health and safety stuff, but this can be used safely, you know. Spray it into the applicator. Just don't throw it around. And that is a risk because I think, you know, I've been, we talked about all the interesting stuff and I've been talking about all this detailing stuff for years, yeah? Years and years, but lots of people might get this bottle not know, not even, it won't even enter their mind if it's water-based or solvent-based or if it's ceramic material. They'll just grab this bottle and they'll hurl it around. They'll be spraying anything that moves, like you know, blasting the crap out of everything, uh, sucking it all in and breathing it all in. Um, but I think it can be used sensibly and you could probably still spray it around. Yeah, you can, quite a lot comes out though. So you could spray that, you'd want to spread that, wouldn't you? Get that sheen everywhere. You can still spray it without it. It's nice and thin, which is good. I've got no problems with that whatsoever. No problems. That will just settle down as it dries. But the finish is really, really nice. In fact, I've got a sh nice little sheen all the way over my dashboard. My steering wheel just feels a little bit fresher than it was before, and it already looked pretty good after the clean. Yeah, I could even put a bit over my gear knob. Will that help with wear and tear on the gear knob? Who knows? As long as I can't see it and I don't get any little patchy film, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So, let's come out the car. Ooh. One thing that's just thought come to my mind is it doesn't say anything about, um, you know, it creates a hydrophobic surface, which is fine. Um, how long does it take? Oh, is it leaking out of this bottle? Well, it is, it's leaking everywhere. Yeah? Look, let's just come in here. How long does it take to dry before I can go and sprinkle some water on it? So this is why it's probably important to wear gloves. It's going all over my hands. Why is that going all over my hands? Don't know, where's it? It's coming out. Oh, okay, it's one of those bloody, yeah, it's one of those ones. Yeah, look, it's all leaking, leaking out that top. Um, so let me just have a look at that. That's done up tight. Yeah, it's not airtight. That's not airtight, that bottle. It's all over my work surface. <laughs> Ceramic coat, my. Just gonna, literally I'm just gonna ceramic coat my work surface here or else I'll be wasting it. So that's a little bit of a problem. These, I remember these trigger sprays. So you, to, to make that airtight, you're gonna, when you finish using it, you'll wanna tighten that up, then it becomes airtight. But, so that's tightened up. But still, you hear that? And it's still squirting out of there a little bit. Yeah, you can. And because you're getting it all over your hands, can you see that? Let's just give that a little squeeze. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that needs sorting out. Apologies if that's, I'm 99% sure that's the trigger that came with it. It looks like the same trigger in the, um, that's in the bottle. It's things like that that just need to be sorted. So that isn't airtight. That might, so what I would have to do really here, let me just come back around here. I've got ceramic coating all over, or ceramic interior spray all over my hands and everywhere. It's when I finish using this, I'm gonna to need to take that sprayer out and put that lid back on, or else the air is gonna get in there. I don't think that's going to be a good thing. It's also solvent, so you're probably going to lose a bit. I don't know how bad that's going to be, but also if you're using it, when, they, when they're not tight like that, you know, and they don't, they're not, if you ever tip the bottle over or put it away somewhere and it's not upright, you lose half your product. You wouldn't want to do that. So, interesting, guys. Interesting. What we'll just do now, because that, that resin 
has been on that door for about 10 minutes, which is probably long enough. Uh, we'll just grab some water. We'll just see what it's like here. We'll go over to the other side. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's, I don't know actually. Yeah, it's a bit beady, <laughs> a bit hydrophobic. Ceramic material on its own isn't that hydrophobic, but I can see there's a layer of something that the water is repelling, but is that unusual? If there's nothing on there, there shouldn't be anything on this side. Oh, that's still be no, no difference. Maybe that's got some old dressing on it. Don't know. Not too worried about that. The hydrophobic, the beads. You start wondering about the beads on your interior. Who cares? <laughs> it don't get wet. Well, it does. It could get wet, but I'm not too worried about that. So, so far, guys, I hope that's given you an idea of DIY detail. How the hell am I going to be able to test comparative performance of this protective side of these products? How am I going to be able to test them, this against all of those? So I think the way forward is to get them all out on my Gulf, rate them on how much they improve the finish. I don't want any sliminess. Um, I want some sort of visual test of all of them and then that, that test you know leave them on all over the summer and see how they're looking in like you know three or four months time after application but some of them like this you can't even see them you can barely see them so visual test isn't great um, I don't have access to a UV tank so I can't really test UV protection it could be very difficult this is going to be the biggest problem with DIY detail ceramic spray. You're being asked, really, to take a leap of faith. With exterior protection products, like a wax or something, you know, that creates like a nice shiny finish. You know, how they are to work is important, how much they cost is important. But people love to see like loads of beading and like a nice slick buff on it and all that. So you can have some a bit more things, and durability, of course, that are tested with these interior things really it's very difficult that's why I'd, you know when people talk about waxes and stuff they talk about their favorites and that but then you very rarely hear a strong opinion about an interior product so is just the best interior product the most versatile the one that you can dilute down can do the most things with so you have less products or is there any legs in this new technology um, at the moment, very difficult to say, because from application, it's like applying a mineral spirit to your um, door, and then it flashes away, and there's no real indication that it's ever been there. But this is a genuine ceramic, or it wouldn't have little bits in it. So yeah, interesting, and there's not too many of these on the market. So doing this review hasn't made me anti-DIY detail interior ceramic it's made me confident that it's the real deal but i was very cynical at the start i'm not sure of the benefits and i'm still very cynical right now of the benefits versus the price um, and i just think the main priority if this was my product would be to make sure that the sprayer that comes with it and apologies if this isn't the sprayer but i'm 99 percent sure it is is airtight um, and doesn't leak when it when you tip it over and squeeze or whatever this does because this material is uh, good I'd also make some changes and I'd also put wear gloves here I'd also put on the instructions to spray an applicator and then apply it rather than spray it around in the cockpit um, I think that's just a safety thing uh, I would also look to include some surfaces that I don't think you should be spraying this on if indeed you shouldn't like I've said those certain types of screens maybe they're okay Alcantara glass etc the things that I'm not too sure about um, other than that very interesting yeah really interesting and different and unique let's talk about some positives because I've just you know you can think I'm doing these and I'm a bit over cynical but you know how I work you know how I work this would last you a long time if if, you, if it's not leaking, you know, this will last you a long time, even a professional. There is an upsell element to this as a professional detailer, because 
you could look and say, well, I can dress your interior with um, normal spray, and um, that me doing that will cost you five pounds, and I'll use a silicon-based spray. Or I have an interior ceramic, which is ceramic material, costs more. I'm not saying it's better or worse, but it's a real ceramic. And if you want me to use that, it's 15 pounds. And you would only use, you know, you might use 20 mil, like even less. You might even use 10, 30 mil, a few squirts or whatever. But, you know, you could go and carefully, a lot more carefully than me, apply it all over a dash, whatever, and someone might want to pay for that. And you've got an upsell there. So there's some positives to this. So let's end the video here, guys. An overall summary with DIY detail ceramic. This is an expensive product which looks like genuine ceramic material that might be difficult for lots of people to justify. But if you've tried every silicon dressing on the market and you're at that stage where you don't mind paying a little bit more and you want to try something new, maybe give it a try. And um, I hope this review has been useful. Do not expect miracles, though. Know what you're getting into, you know. Don't expect your dashboard to be glowing with gloss and, you know, water flying off it or anything. Don't expect all that. But just know that you are buying a different material that is not some form of silicon, you know. It's, it's legit. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Put in the comments what you think about all this. And take care, and I will see you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see how the DIY product fares in the test, you know, against all these. Where does it come? That will be winging its way to you soon. <laughs> don't ask me when. And yes, my Porsche's blown up, so I'll do some updates on the engine on that once I know, as soon as I know. Thank you. Bye.